Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope all is well. Hope everybody's doing all right. Looks like a few people still connecting. So um let's see. Anybody have any questions or anything? Everybody good? Um everybody all right. Professor, I do have a question. Yep. You said everything from section one is due on June twentieth? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep, yep, all right, yep. I'm just clarifying. I just yeah, not, not a problem, not a problem. Okay. Um, but yeah, so chapter one, because we we did six one six last class, so we'll do one seven today, and that'll be it for chapter one. And so you know, this week will be the thirteenth, and next Sunday will be the twentieth. So yep, yeah, we'll be done with chapter uh, one today. Well, at least okay. new content. Yep. All right, good question, good question. Anything else, anybody else, before we uh, look at 1.7? Uh, all right, oh, something in the chat. Oh yeah, um, so when it comes to chapter one's test, whenever I post a test in my math lab, you have the freedom and the luxury to knock it out, you know, whenever you want to, at, you know, at your earliest convenience. So if you're done with the homework, um, remember the, the test review is not mandatory, but I, I think it would be good that if you at least take a look at it, you know, see what's going to be on the test, see how the test is going to, um, you know, prep your thoughts. And then from there, you know, if you're ready for the test, go ahead and knock it out. Don't forget, uh, for any test, not your homework, but for any test that you take, make sure you send me any scratch work. Um, cause remember, you're not supposed to be leaning heavily on apps to do the work for us. There's, you know, there's stuff that you guys are supposed to be doing in order to get to your answer. So uh, that's why you need to go in and, you know, validate so your work. Hmm? Where would we upload the, um, the, the scrap work? Uh, just shoot it to me in an email. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep, you can take a picture with your phone, scan it, whatever way you want to do it, and then just uh, email it to me. You said for the homework too? I said not the homework. Yep, not the homework. So yeah, just your test, just your test. All right. Thank you. When did you say the test? We can do the test. It First is one. due. It's due by tonight. No, I'm just by tonight. Uh, no, I'm just messing with you. Oh, I know you just. Can't, I know your audio just kicked in, so I'll just mess with you. Um, but no, it's due. Um, you know, as soon as possible. Um, anything I posted. Well, no, 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 no. This class is different because that's uh stats. Your your test is due by the twentieth. Everything in chapter one is due by the twentieth. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. This, do you know what chapter? How many chapters we're gonna do over this summer? It's like their idea. Four. You're gonna get four in. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, not a problem. So is this the only one we could do, like, whenever? Um. As of right now, we probably will do test. At some point, we do have to do a proctor one. So. Um, it's up in the air. Either way, whatever we do, I'm going to give you enough time to be able to, you know, uh, study for it and get yourself together as far as, um, <laughs> I didn't mean to scare you, my bad. Uh, but I, I'll give you enough time, just like today, you know, uh, not today, last week I told you it was the 20th, so I, I mean, I gave you like two weeks, you know, for the end of chapter one stuff. So I'm going to give you enough time regardless as to which test will be proctored and when due dates are going to be and all the stuff like that. Uh, I know we have to get a proctor test in there haven't decided if it's going to be chapter two or chapter three yet. And, um, you know, now we're going to which one's that. easier. Well, <laughs> uh, I usually gauge it on how my math lab looks, how, how you got, how the class is actually, you know, knocking it out and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes it's about timing as well versus which one is easiest. You know, if we rolling through chapter two stuff, we're not a problem. Then we could do chapter two proctor, and and then it's like whichever test I do, uh, do proctor. You know, there still will be a makeup opportunity as well. So, um, you know, a lot of times with math, what is easiest depends on the person individually. I think I'm thinking chapter two would be easiest. So I'm thinking, I mean, chapter two is always the one I shoot for to go ahead and knock out as a proctor test. But, um, you know, well, you know, I, I, uh, when we get closer to that, you know, I'll see, gauge the class, see what you guys think. We'll talk about it. 
Yeah. I, I got a question. Real yep. Quick. So when we're taking these proctor tests, um, do you want us to have notes as well and then email it to you? Uh, you say notes, you mean scratch work? Yeah, scratch work. Yeah, mm -hmm. same same type of thought process, yeah. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to get into math lab for like the past three days and I cannot get in. So I was mm -hmm. just wondering if you've had a problem with that or if it's literally just my laptop. Yeah, I haven't, but if you stay online, uh, stay on the Zoom when we close out, we can uh, talk and see if we can figure it out. Okay, thank and you. Make sure you're straight. Yep, not a problem. All right, anything else? Anybody else? All right, so let's go ahead to the notes. Um, yep, we did all the one six last class. We will just do one seven today. And uh, that'll be it. Okay. All right. So let's look at 1.7 linear inequalities and absolute value inequalities. We did absolute value. Uh, I think it was last section. It might have been section four last. But now we're looking at uh, that was absolute value equations. This time we're looking at absolute value inequalities. Probably could have wrote that title a little neater, but it's all good. All right, so let's look at the difference between our equations versus our inequalities. So linear equation has an equal sign. You know, that's what we dealt with up to this point when it comes to our linear uh, equations. So we have x plus 5 equal to 7. Um, as an example of an equation, x plus 5 greater than 7 it is an example of a linear inequality. The main difference between the two is that one has the equal sign, which is the equation. The other one has the inequality symbol. Um, and we'll talk about the different symbols we can't use in a second. So now the solution and the way we will find our solutions will be the same, except when it comes to inequalities, there is one thing that we have to consider that's extra. And we'll talk about that before we close out, of course. Um, but when I solve my equation, I will have x equal to two. That's only one solution. And that is the only solution for this equation. In other words, that is the only value for x that will make this statement true, x equal to two. Now, when it comes to solving your inequalities, when I solve, you know, you subtract five from both sides, just like you would in the equation, I will have the solution set of x is greater than two. So that would be infinitely many solutions instead of just one. And that represents all the values that are greater than two. So any value greater than two will make this statement true. In other words, you're looking at when is this left side, why is my pen not working? When is this left side greater than the right side? When is x plus five greater than seven? When x is greater than two? So 2.1 will make that statement true. 100 will make that statement true. 5,000 will make that statement true you know, if you were to plug it in for X. So any value greater than two will make the left side of my uh, inequality greater than the right side. All right, can we scroll up? All right, so we have four inequality symbols that we're actually going to use. We have our less than symbol, then we have less than with the bar under it will be a less than or equal to. Greater than, and then greater than with the bar under it will be greater than or equal to. All right, can we scroll up?
All right. All right, so graphing and our interval notation. Less than and greater than, we'll use parentheses. Less than equal to or greater than equal to, we'll use brackets. And then for our infinity signs, we will always use parentheses. So notice what parentheses mean versus what brackets mean. Parentheses mean to exclude the value. That means the value that we're dealing with, you cannot use. Um, bracket will mean that you include that value. And um, what well, these symbols right here is open circle, parentheses is the same thing as open circle. Bracket is the same thing as closed circle. For those of you who know, remember that, or maybe leaning on that thought process, uh, open and closed circles. Um, and you always use parentheses on your infinity signs because you can never include infinity because you always can go to that, that next value. All right, so if you have the, the uh, solution set of X is greater than two, that represents all the values greater than two, like we mentioned before, but two is not included as a part of your solution set. You know, we talk about all the values that are greater than two. Two is not a part of that solution set. So that's what we mean by exclude. You would exclude two. Two is not a part of your solution set. Now, when you have greater than or equal to two, that means two is included as a part of your solution set because it says or equal to two. All right. So you're gonna have three pieces of information that represent the same solution set, you know, or same group of answers. You know, you have your expression right here, X is greater than two. Then we're gonna have interval notation and then we will have a graph. I'll show you all three pieces, of course. But each piece has to reflect the other. So each piece has to be using the same symbol. So you'll know that this is what was used here versus here and all this stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Also, when it comes to greater than versus less than, no matter what number you use, if you look at the generic number line, that's what I have right here. And that's what we will be graphing on. Um, everything to the right of any number will be greater than it. everything to the left of any number will be less than it. So uh, that will always be the case, whether you're looking at negative two, everything to the right of negative two will be greater than it. Everything to the left of negative two will be less than it. Same thing with uh, positive one. If I have positive one and I want to know, I want to shade um, all the numbers that are greater than one, I will be shading to the right. All the numbers that are less than one will be a shading to the left. Any questions, any questions? So this is just an example of how all three pieces of your answers would look. Um, let's go green. Maybe black is better. So the first row just represents your solution set. Second row is the graph. Then the third row is your interval notation. So I'm um, looking at the first column, X is greater than two. So I want all the values that are greater than two, but because I have the greater than symbol, I'm only gonna use the parentheses, not the bracket. So I put parentheses over the two and shade to the right. And that represents all the values that are greater than two. Interval notation. If you read that graph from left to right, that's two to infinity. So you would do two comma infinity and use parentheses for both of them. Looking at greater than or equal to though, my shading is still going to be to the right, but now I'm using bracket because I have the or equal to symbol, that bar under my greater than sign. So now I use bracket. Then, uh, but the same reading, if I look at my shading, I'm going from two to positive infinity. So it's two comma infinity. Use a bracket over the two 
and then parentheses over your infinity sign. So that's how your three pieces of information would look. My math lab may ask you for all three, or they may just ask you for two of the pieces, uh, but you should be ready to give all three if you have to. And then you, the, um, the bracket and the parentheses on the line, that's what you were talking about, the open and the closed circle, correct? Exactly, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, any questions? Any questions before I scroll up? Make sure we're good. All right, so I have a generic chart um, that covers all of the scenarios that we may encounter when it comes to solution set, graph, and interval notation. So let's look at the first four. And so this note right here, A and B, gonna represent real numbers. So X is our variable, but A and B just represents a number. So when I get here, just like, you know, that two that we just used in the previous example, same type of deal, um, but we just wanted to generically represent anything for us. Um, so if we look at greater than, uh, which is what we just looked at with that two, if X is greater than A, parentheses over A, shade to the right, and then my interval notation will go from A to infinity, parentheses over both. Um, if all I change is have the or equal to sign under that greater than, bracket will be over the A. Same shading though. Now, if it's less than, I'm going to shade everything to the left of A. So you want to think about less than, left of, um, shade everything to the left of A. Parentheses, if it's just a less than symbol, bracket, if it's less than or equal to. Also note, how we set up our interval notation. Remember, we always read from left to right. So notice negative infinity comes first. So it's negative infinity to A. And, uh, you know, negative infinity column A, parentheses on both for the first one, or for the third one, third row, and then parentheses over infinity sign, bracket over the A for that fourth row. And notice each piece reflects the other. That's why you can't do A to, count to negative infinity because that's not a position. And negative infinity comes first then it goes up to A. So everything's supposed to be reflected using your brackets accordingly, parentheses accordingly, and so on. I have a quick question. Um, yeah. As far as like the bracket A comma infinity parentheses and then parentheses negative infinity comma A bracket, why, mm -hmm. why is there a bracket and a parentheses, not two brackets? Well, it goes back to what parentheses mean versus what brackets mean. So, Bracket means that you're going to include that value. Parentheses it means you're going to exclude that. So you can never include infinity because you can't put a number on infinity. It's going to keep going. You know what I mean? There's always that next okay. number. Okay. So so then if it wasn't infinity, like if it was a set number, it would be a bracket. It's possible, and so that's what we're going to get into these next ones down here. Yep. Gotcha. I'm jumping ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, going back to what you're saying, though, but if you ever use infinity, infinity symbol, whether it's negative or positive, they always carry parentheses. Got it. All right. So, like you said, that is a great segue into the next four scenarios. So, uh, we will come across what we call three-part inequalities, and that's because they have, you know, three parts. Um, and you will see those when we go to solve. But um, what this one says, oh, my... See, I had my eraser up, my bad. So what this says right here is that my solution set or my answers will be in between A and B. In other words, values that are greater than A, but less than B. And so we don't have the or equal to symbol. So both of them are parentheses, parentheses over A, parentheses over B. Uh, same thing happens here. And then for the next one, notice there's the or equal to for A, but not for B. So you have the bracket on A, parentheses on B. Next one we switched up, have the or equal to on B, so there's parentheses on A, bracket on B. And then for that last one, or equal to is, is attached to both A and B, so we have brackets on A and B. Shading is still the same, still shading in between A and B, but the use of parentheses versus bracket is what switches up.
And remember, those symbols will be in the problem. So it's nothing that you have to decide. Uh, those symbols will already be set up and you just solve accordingly, solve according to what they have uh, given you in your inequality. So now we shade up to B and not up to infinity, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. All right, any questions before we look into solving? All right, so the one thing that we have to consider that we do not have to consider when dealing with our equations, and that is if you multiply or divide by a negative number, then you must change or something like say flip. Hmm? Uh, can you go back up? I wasn't done, like copying. For like two seconds. All right. So is that good enough? That's up enough? Yeah, that's good. Okay. So uh, you must change. Sometimes people say flip your inequality symbol. So let me scroll up in a second. I want to make sure uh, we get a chance to finish up there. All right, how are we looking? Can we scroll up from the chart now? Yeah, you can. All right. Uh, hold on one second, guys. One second. All right, sorry about that. My three-year-old was yelling out she had to pee pee. So I uh, kind of didn't want that to be on the floor. So <laughs> uh, like I said, I apologize for the interruption. All right, so um, uh, whenever you multiply, divide both sides by a negative value in order to be able to solve, uh, you got to change. Because like I said, sometimes people say flip your inequality. So here's a simple example of that. Uh, if we have negative 3x is greater than 17, and we want to solve for x, we have to divide both sides by negative three. That's something that we normally do. Um, but when we divide both sides by negative three, then my greater than symbol has to change to less than. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? Make sure we're okay. So whenever you divide or multiply both sides by a negative value, we deal with the inequalities, these inequalities, you have to change that sign. Outside of that, everything else is still the same as far as solving. So we have X is less than negative 17 over three. As far as graphing, put a parenthesis, use your generic number line, put a parenthesis over negative 17 over three, shade to the left, you go to, we're talking about less than and then your interval notation will reflect the same thing. Negative infinity to negative 17 over three, parentheses over both. All right, any questions? All right. 
You ready, Saul? Can I scroll up? All right. So I guess I erase some of this. Oh, well, I guess I could have left it. So we are looking at our first one. 3 minus 2x is less than or equal to 11. So our original equation right here, or inequality. So first thing we'll do is subtract 3 from both sides. That'll leave us with negative 2x is less than or equal to 8. Then to get x by itself, we want to divide both sides by negative 2. But as I just mentioned in the last one, if you divide or multiply both sides by negative, that symbol of less than has to change to greater than. And so we have x is greater than or equal to negative 4. So use a bracket, shade to the right. And then negative 4 to infinity is our solution set. Bracket over the 4, parentheses over the infinity sign. <clears throat> All right, questions, any questions? All right, can I scroll up? All right, looking at the next one, we have x plus 3 over 4 is greater than x minus 2 over 3 plus 1 over 4. All right, so first thing we'll do, remember whenever we have fractions involved, what we'll do, we clear out the fractions by finding the LCD. LCD is 12. And if I were to erase this. So the LCD is 12. So the first thing we would do is multiply each numerator by 12. Right. Then after that, you go ahead and simplify. So 4 goes into 12, leaves you with 3. 3 goes into 12, leaves you with 4. And the other 4 goes into 12 and leaves you with 3. And so that's what we have down here. 3 times x plus 3 is greater than 4 times x minus 2 plus 3 times 1. Any questions before we go to the next step? Make sure we're okay. Where did we get the one from? Uh, it's right here. Are you talking about that one? Uh, yes. Yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, same thing with x minus 2. It's the same x minus 2 as right here. Same thing with that x plus 3. Mm-hmm. All right, so next step is to go ahead and distribute. Distribute 3 into the x plus 3. That's 3x plus 9. 4 times x, 4 times negative 2. And then that 3 times 1 on the right side. So that's 4x minus 8 plus 3.
All right, so on the right side, we can combine the like terms. Negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. So that'll leave us with that expression, 3x plus 9, greater than 4x minus 5. So now your goal should be to get all of your terms with x on one side, all of the terms without x to the other. Doesn't matter which way you decide to do it. Um, I decided to subtract 3x. Let me see. Yep. Decided to subtract 3x and add 5. And that gives me this result right here. So if I were to subtract 3x from both sides. That gives me, uh, that cancels out on the left. And then on the right, that gives me 1x. Add 5 to both sides, cancels out on the right. And then on the left gives me 14. So I have 14 greater than x. So did it that way just because I just wanted to emphasize uh, what would happen if you were to come across this scenario. So most of the time my math lab, unless they change something, want your variable on the left side as far as your solution is concerned. So that's what we have right here. So if, that, if you ever solve and have your variable on the right side, all you do is flip it. So that means uh, the way you would look at it is if, uh, if the mouth is open towards the 14, when x is on the right, then the mouth should be open towards the 14 when x is on the left. So all you're doing is just, you know, flipping your symbol and your position of your signs and stuff. So just want to make sure we saw that that's the same thing. And those are all three pieces of your solutions or, the rep or all three representations of your solutions. So shade to the left parentheses over 14, and then for interval notation, negative, infin negative infinity to 14, parentheses over both. All right, any questions? All right, next one, three-part inequality. Those last four uh, in our chart, last four rows in our chart, or four scenarios, um, called on a three-part inequality relationship. Remember, it says called three-part inequality because there are three you know, parts instead of just two. So if you remember, uh, your variable was in the middle in those charts. And so we want to keep the variable in the middle and we want to solve it, leaving the variable in the middle. So if I remove this part and all I had was this and I want to solve for X, the first thing I would do is subtract both sides, um, subtract one from both sides. So you take on that same thought process it's just instead of having two sides, you have three sides. So that's what we did here, or three parts. We subtract one from all three parts. All right, and that leaves us with negative four less than two X, which is less than or equal to two. Then to solve, we divide all three pieces, or all three parts by two. Because remember your goal is still to get X by itself but with x being in the middle. And that's our answer, that's our result. Have you divide both each part by two. Um, x is greater than negative two, but it's less than or equal to one.
And oh, your other two parts. There are your other two parts as far as your representation of your solution sets. Notice the parentheses over the two, bracket over the one. And that holds true for both pieces. All right, questions, any questions? All right, any problems before we look at, or anybody still copying before we go up to absolute value inequalities? So for um, this one, we don't like, we don't flip the greater sign or less than sign in any way? Only if you were dividing by negative. If, uh, if we had a negative two right here, then dividing by negative two would make you flip your signs, change your signs. So, but I don't think you guys will see one like that, but uh, you know, as far as three part inequalities are concerned. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that's, but if you were in a upper, you know, level math or something, or, you know, if you do see it in, this, in the homework, just let me know, we can talk about it. But all you would do is flip the signs and um, still would do all the same things down here though. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else before we go to absolute value inequalities? All right, so when it comes to absolute value inequalities, um, you're gonna set up your uh, solution set and how, well, set up your problem a certain way according to what symbol you have. Um, and it will help you find your solution set accordingly. So if you let U just be an algebraic expression and you let C be a positive number, notice the first one, the key here is the fact that you have a, a less than symbol. If your symbol is less than, then you'll use that purple box for your setup. In other words, you'll have U is greater than negative C, but less than C, positive C. Now, number two, if your symbol is greater than, then you set it up the same way that we have the gray box, I mean, in the green box, where you have U is greater than C or U is less than negative C. So really what we're doing is that we're using the opposite sign of C and the opposite inequality in both cases. Um, but the setup, you know, is different according to shading and all that stuff. Remember, each piece is supposed to reflect each other. And so what they're saying is once you set it up, even if you weren't to set it up, if you were to go about and do your shading, this is how it would reflect out. So they said, just going to give you a heads up, this is the best way to set it up. Um, and then notice right here, same thing flows for if these symbols were, you know, had the or equal to sign. Mm -hmm. All right. Am I done copying? Can we scroll up? We're good. All right, so let's look at this first one. Like I said, the main thing you have to remember when it comes to absolute value inequalities is your initial setup. If it's less than, like we have in here, absolute value of x minus four is less than three. So this will be the setup. You know, x minus four would be our u when it goes back to what we initially talked about. And then three would be c. So you have x minus four is greater than negative three, but it's less than three. So up top, are those the formulas for how it should be set up? Mm -hmm. Yep, in every case, when you're dealing with absolute value inequalities, yep. All right, any questions before we go ahead and solve this one? All right, so we will go ahead and add four to all three parts. And that will give us X is greater than one, but less than seven. And would allow us to shade 
in between one and seven, use a parentheses over the one and seven, and then one comma seven for interval notation, parentheses over both. And any questions on that one? All right, so the next one, we have seven is less than the absolute value of five minus two X. So if you go back to what we had originally, notice that in both cases, our absolute value quantity was on the left side. And that's how we made our establishment or how we're going to set it up. So you want to keep that same uh, thought process and hold true to that. And so that's what I did here. Um, I rewrote the original problem with my absolute value quantity on the left side. And so notice now we have absolute value of five minus two X greater than seven. All right. So this is what we're going to lean on. We always want our inequality quantity. We're not inequality, our absolute value quantity on the left side and then make our, our moves. All right, so now because it's greater than, remember greater than tells us to set, up, set it up this way, you know, our green box. So that's what we did here. Five minus two X is less than negative seven or five minus two X is greater than seven. All right, so from there we'll solve each part accordingly. First, we're gonna subtract five from both sides in both cases. All right, then notice we have negative two X. So we need to divide both sides by negative two, but don't forget whenever you divide both sides by negative two or by negative number, you're gonna have to change your inequality. So we have negative two X is less than negative 12. We have negative two X is greater than two. So when I divide by negative two, that's gonna change my inequalities to X is greater than six or X is less than negative one. All right, so here are our representations of our solution solution set. So notice X is less than negative one is on this side right here. X is greater than six is over here. And so you just got to make sure you hold true to, you know, notation and what this stuff means. And also the word or is going to be uh, represented by our union symbol. Um, that's what we have right here. And so that's negative infinity to negative one, union six to infinity. Use a parentheses for, for all. We did not have it or equal to symbol show up so we did not use the bracket all right problems before we look at another one make sure we're okay
Alright. Alright, so uh let's see, do we have any more after this? Yeah, we got a few. Make sure concepts and stuff. Okay. So the next one is negative two times the absolute value of three x plus five plus seven squared then equal to negative thirteen. All right. So first thing we want to do is isolate, isolate our absolute value. So we need to get that on one side by itself. And on of course on that left side. So First thing we'll do is subtract both sides, uh, subtract seven from both sides. And that will leave us with negative two, absolute value of three X plus five is greater than or equal to negative 20. All right, then from there, divide both sides by negative two. And don't forget, once again, we divide it by a negative number. So that greater than will go to less than. So we have the absolute value of three X plus five is less than 10, less than or equal to 10. And the problem so far. Of course, we're not done, but you know, just make sure we are okay up to this point. We just solve for the absolute value quantity, or the quantity that's inside the absolute value. All right. So, okay, I must have. Okay. Uh, I'll come back to that. So now we have the absolute value of three x plus five is less than 10, less than or equal to 10. Right there, somebody must have asked me a question about something. So like I said, we'll come back to that. Uh, less than or equal to 10. So now since it's less than, we're gonna set it up. Uh, get my stuff, set it up this way. Well, we have three X plus five is greater than or equal to negative 10, but less than or equal to positive 10. So now we need to solve for X, leaving X in the middle. Subtract five from both sides, well, all three parts, sorry about that. Um, that'll give us negative 15, less than or equal to three X, which is less than or equal to five. And then we'll divide all three pieces by three. And that'll give us our solution set. So this X is greater than or equal to negative five, but less than or equal to five over three. So it means we'll shade in between, but we use a no, uh, bracket because of that or equal to symbol over both. Same thing with um, our interval notation, negative five to five thirds bracket over both. Any questions, any questions? All right, can I go back up? Everybody good? Anybody still copying? All right, so going back here, to this middle part uh, was just me emphasizing the possible scenarios. Notice 
when you go back here, of course, I'm going to scroll back down. But give me a second. Notice right here it says C had to be a positive number. Because if C is not positive, then that um, makes our situation way simpler. And we talked about when we had absolute value equations. You know, if your absolute value set equal to a negative, then the answer is no solution. That's because absolute value can never result in a negative number. So if you look at what's going on here, if you have a solution, if you want to know when is uh, the absolute value of x plus 7 greater than negative 5, the answer is always. That's always going to be the case. So your answers are real numbers. Then here, when is the absolute value of 7 less than negative 5? The answer is never. So there's no solution. OK, so that's why this only applies. You know, what we've done up to this point only applied to positive numbers because your absolute value can never result in a negative. So once again, if it asks you, if you see it, you know the problem, you know, when is the absolute value quantity? It says solve. When is the absolute value quantity greater than a negative number? Answers are real numbers. When is it greater than, or when is it less than a negative number? Answers no solution. Questions or anything? So anytime we have a question like uh, and like a question like that, it, mm -hmm. uh, like the 10 in that case is always going to be whatever we solve for. Now we said the, okay, so you're talking about right here. Yeah, like at first the 10 wasn't there, but it's just whatever we solve for at the top part. Right, right. I see what you're saying. Right. So right, you had to isolate this. And so once you isolate it, that's when the 10 at right comes into play. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Anything else? Make sure we're good. Everybody all right? Okay. So um, next class, uh, that's it for chapter seven, chapter one. So next class, I will open up the floor for questions first, see if anybody have anything. Uh, but if you don't have any questions, then uh, of course we don't have the luxury of not doing anything. Remember this is a 10 week course and uh, we gotta uh, get these sections uh, covered. Make sure you guys are good going into pre-calc too. So um, we will at least do 2.1 next class. Um, but uh, what that's, Today is Tuesday, so that's Thursday. So next Tuesday, I'll do the same thing. You know, maybe some questions will be generated over the weekend. So I will open up the floor for questions first on anything out of chapter one. See if you have any questions, we'll address those first. That will take priority on Tuesday as well. Um, you know, over the weekend, check out the test review. Make sure there aren't any problems that you want to you just see me do. You know, uh, if that's the case, bring those problems to class and we will uh, knock those out. Um, questions, concerns, comments, anything, anybody? Professor Tucker, are you able to upload this video today? Uh, people always ask me to do stuff. No, I'm just playing. I will, uh, yeah, I'll try to make that happen. Matter of fact, let me write myself a note. Since Miss Chambers asked, I guess I can make that happen. Thank you. <laughs> Not a problem. So this 161. Today's lecture. Feel free that um, you know if you guys you know yeah Miss Chambers you know you don't mind shooting me an email if you don't see it by let's see it's twelve now if you don't see it by two or three ish feel free to shoot an email to me remind me no problem yeah yeah thank you thank you all right anything else anybody else everybody good everybody straight. All right. So, um, you know, if you guys are good, I'm good. I will see you on next class. And like I said, bring those questions if you have them. And uh, we will get into a little bit of chapter two as well. All right. You guys have a good one. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Take care. Have a nice Thank day. You, Thanks. You the same. Take care.